2014 Chino City Councilmen uh, meeting. Would you all rise for the flag salute? We're privileged this evening to be led uh, by the Don Lugo ROTC Color Guard. If you please join me. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's give a big round of applause. Don Lugo, ROTC Pentagon. Please take your seat. Uh, we should have the uh, Chino Chorus uh, coming into the chamber about this uh, time. There's Dr. Berger. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Good evening. How's everyone doing today? Good. It's always a pleasure for us to be here. And uh, we have a couple of songs for you to put you in the holiday mood. And um, we hope you enjoy our music. Our first song is entitled Winter Dreams.
Thank you. We'd like to dedicate this next song to our Jewish community, and this one's entitled Celebration of Light. songs, but if you could do another one, that'd be your Christmas present from you to me. I would appreciate that. Would you like to hear another one? <laughs> this one's entitled Everywhere Christmas Tonight. Thank you, Dr. Berger. We always appreciate the, that every year you come and show up at the community course, and it's a wonderful thing. And want to wish all of you guys a merry, merry Christmas and a healthy, prosperous New Year. So, uh, we will take a short recess as the community course uh, exits from the the uh, 
council chambers, and we'll be back uh, shortly. Thank you again. On behalf of the uh, Chino Community Chorus, we'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday season. God bless you, and have a good night. We'll reconvene the city council meeting and thank you for your patience. Uh, we'll go right to ceremonials. Uh, the first one is Healthy Chino 10 year anniversary. I'd like to call up the Healthy Chino team, Linda Reich, Director of Community Services, and Ted Vistarki, the Chino Community Services Manager. We have a proclamation. Is this thing working? Proclamation reads, whereas the Healthy Chino Coalition was established in September 2004 in partnership with the community leaders such as Chino Valley Unified School District, the Chino Valley YMCA, focused on youth, faith-based and service organizations, and local businesses to increase healthy lifestyle options and the quality of life for our community. And whereas Healthy Chino remains committed to its five founding principles, fitness, health and human services, nutrition, public education, and safe and walkable neighborhoods. And whereas Healthy Chino has emerged as a leader in the healthy communities movement by implementing a, a holistic approach to health that, boy, they got some big words in here for me, <laughs> permeates all the city programs encouraging healthy lifestyles with programs such as the Farmer's Market, the Community Garden, Chino Walks, Employee a Wellness, and Healthy Family Day. And whereas the uh, Healthy Chino is among the first California cities to include a healthy city element in the 2025 general plan that incorporates health in all aspects of the city's development through smart growth principles, such as walkable neighborhoods and open space. And whereas the city of Chino is a designated League of California Cities healthy eating, active living, uh, heal cities. And whereas 2015 marks our 10 year anniversary, of Healthy Chino and the launch of the 10 Years Stronger campaign celebrating 10 years of healthy lifestyles in the city of Chino. Now therefore I, Dennis Yates, Mayor of the city of Chino, do hereby proclaim 2015 as the 10th anniversary of Healthy Chino. Linda, we'd like to present that to you. Thank you. 
Well, first, I'd like to start by saying I can't believe it's been 10 years. This is one of the first programs I worked on when I came to the city. And I want to thank the mayor and the council for your insight and your leadership in letting us start this program that has really worked hard over the last 10 years to provide healthy lifestyle options for our residents. And we have made huge strides, like you said, with our Healthy Chino Element. We have workshops. We have the garden, the farmer's market. Every day, we are doing different things to promote health in our community. And this all started because of the obesity epidemic that we were seeing 10 years ago, which is still there today, and we will continue to work hard. <laughs> Not you, Mayor. <laughs> continue to work hard so that our children will have a healthy life, and they might... Um, have a more healthy life than they would have had. And we in the city of Chino are one of 23 cities and um, special districts in San Bernardino County with a healthy communities program. And we are one of the, the leaders in that. We have um, really gone out to a lot of different cities and helped them start their programs. And we could not have done that without your support. So we really thank you for that. Ted's gonna give us, give you all a little bit of information what we're gonna do in 2015 and we hope that you'll join us. Lastly, I'd just like to thank our partners because it's not just the city of Chino. Several of our partners also have healthy communities programs. They promote healthy Chino within the city and we can't do it without them. Well, this program was key for us winning the 100 most of, uh, cities to raise young people and this was very key to our success and being nominated five times and receiving that award. I'd just like to mention and encourage everyone in our community to visit HealthyChino.com. We have a lot of programs and activities that we offer on a regular basis. While there, you can sign up to get on our email list. You can get a weekly blasts on healthy tips and reminders to all the different programs that we have to offer. And we're looking forward to an uh, exciting 2015. We have a lot of new programs, a lot of new challenges that we're putting out to the community to be a part of and get involved with. And we have something special we're working on. We don't want to reveal it yet. We're getting close. So we Do encourage you to... to not yet, Mayor. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's top secret. We're working on something exciting that we're going to reveal in the, in the near future. And so we encourage you to, to join our website and, and review it and be a part of our community as we continue to grow uh, within our community in the 20, year 2015. Very good. Um, I remember when we first started this, uh, we got a call from the California League of Cities, and we won the most, we won the most prestigious award uh, given by the California League of Cities, and that was the Helen Putnam Award. I went up, I flew up to Sacramento and went to the big uh, Veterans Hall there, and uh, we won that trophy. And uh, I remember coming back uh, to Chino, and our phones were ringing off the hook. All these cities were calling, uh, wanting to know how to start their Healthy Cities program. And uh, as Linda said, we were instrumental in a lot of uh, Fontana. We helped out with Fontana becoming a healthy city. Um, so. Uh, we would always uh, go out and help these cities start to start their program. So we were a pioneer in San Bernardino County for sure. Well, thank you very much and keep up the good work. And we look forward to uh, new stuff coming out uh, next year. Thank you. Oh, I need the chief thing. Oh, this is a sad night here in the, in the Chino Valley. It's uh, the recognition of our retirement of our chief of police, Miles Pruitt. Uh, Miles, if you please step forward. I have a little, uh, a little bio I'd like to read. Chief Pruitt began his career with the Chino Police Department in 1983. How old are you? Oh. <laughs> when he was hired as a reserve police officer, you're going to get me for that, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, he was hired for a full officer in 1985. Uh, Chief Pruitt worked in a variety of assignments throughout his career, including patrol, investigations, gang enforcement. As a sergeant, he served as a field supervisor, a team leader in the department's special weapons and tactics SWAT team, and led the problem-oriented policing team. He was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 2005, where he served as patrol watch commander. He also served as commander over the Professional Standards Bureau. In 2007, he was promoted to the rank of captain and managed the operations division. In November 2009, Chief Pruitt was promoted to serve as the city's chief of police. Chief Pruitt has served with distinction uh, over the past five years and has led the police department uh, for, to strive for higher levels of excellence throughout his tenure. 
So on behalf of the entire city council and the Chino community, I would like to thank Chief Pruitt on his continuous dedication and service to our community. Uh, he also uh, served as interim city manager uh, while we were looking uh, and recruited um, Matt Ballantyne. So uh, he couldn't wait to get back to being the chief. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of people here to recognition of your service to our community. We'd like to call up Congressman 39 uh, District Ed Royce's representative. Uh, oh, I, I, I will give you that certificate because the congressman couldn't, he's working in DC, I guess. Um, he has a certificate from the congressman um, for Chief Miles Pruitt in honor and recognition of his service in the Chino Police Department and over 30 years of invaluable dedication to the Chino community. That's from the congressman. And uh, Congresswoman uh, District Gloria McLeod's representative, uh, Daniel Sanchez, I believe, is in the audience to make a presentation. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Council. My name is uh, Daniel Sanchez. I represent uh, Congresswoman Gloria Negretti McLeod. She's a Congresswoman for the city of Chino. And I just want to read the certificate of special congressional recognition uh, presented to uh, Chief Pruitt. In honor of your many years of service to the city of Chino, I extend my deepest gratitude and wish you the very best in your retirement. Your leadership as Chief of Police has helped make Chino a safe and great city to live in. Congratulations and thank you for your many years of service. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have the privilege of having our brand new uh, county supervisor here in the 4th District. Just recently sworn in yesterday, uh, our new uh, county supervisor, Mr. Kurt Hagman. Kurt, come on up. <laughs> oh, can you that, don't you? Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief, um, obviously this community is very vital to San Bernardino County, and I think it's um, folks like yourself, and all the, to get more than just their job then. They're involved in the community, a um, number of organizations really believe in the mission of Chino, and that's why Chino is such a success for San Bernardino County. And um, I think you got a, already got a certificate from me from my last office, so you get one from me from both offices, yeah, which is kind of unique. <laughs> yes, um, and um, I would have got a resolution, but we barely were able to figure out how to log in the computer today. So you have the very first certificate at my new <laughs> service office. Um, but we're very proud of you and wish you all the best in retirement. And thank you for doing everything you did for Chino and Chino Valley and as a whole. Um, we really appreciate your dedication to public service and to the community as a person. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Uh, next, we'd like to call the brand new mayor of the city of Chino Hills, Cynthia Moran. Cynthia? We do because of television. Oh, okay, television. Yeah, television. Okay. Well, Miles, on behalf of my colleagues on um, Chino Hill City Council, I'll read what we have for you tonight. In honor of your exemplary commitment and dedication to helping others, we congratulate you on your retirement after 31 years of service to the City of Chino Police Department. So that's for you. Thank you very much. And on a side note, um, you will be missed. You're so approachable and kind <coughs> and nice and... Chino Hills will miss you as well as I know Chino will, but I know we're left in good hands. I don't know where Karen is, so um, good hands, and congratulations on your retirement. You'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. And next up, the California Police uh, Chiefs Association. Privileged to have the uh, Chief of Police from Fontana, uh, Chief Jones. Chief? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. On behalf of the California Police Chiefs Association, I'd like to present uh, Miles with a certificate from the group. Um, Mayor, you've been blessed with the wonderful leadership at the police department, both Chief Pruitt and Chief Comstock, and uh, it is understandable why that uh, Chino Police Department was one of the most respected departments in the region. So Appreciate it's because of the leadership, it's because of the guidance, uh, and I really enjoyed the friendship work with Miles for all these years. Congratulations, Miles. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And last not, but not least, this is what you've been waiting for for 35 years, this I'm thing? I'm waiting for that. Okay. <laughs> it's the, uh, the Chino tile. Uh, the city, Chino City Council, on behalf of the citizens of Chino, wish to express their appreciation 31 years as the dedicated service to the city of Chino and its residents. We'd like to present that to you, Chief. And I know you probably want to say something. We'll, I'll 
we'll get mm -hmm. that hardware for you. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm rarely speechless, um, but uh, so many things have run through my head as I wanted to uh, think of what uh, would be important for me to talk about tonight. And I, wanna, I just want to say a couple of things. And I know there's a lot of people here um, that want to get up and speak, so I won't uh, make it too long. But, uh, you know, one of the things uh, that make a great police department uh, is, is the city council. So you can't have a great police department without the support of a, of a great uh, body of elected officials like the council that we've had. And that's really been the key to us being successful in keeping this community safe and making it the great community that uh, uh, Chief Jones was talking about. Uh, we've also got a great police department. Uh, we hire terrific people. And I'm really proud of the, 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 the uh, department that we've built uh, over the years. And I think the, other, the third thing that makes a, a really great community are the people that live here. Uh, it's not really possible to have uh, great policing unless you have good people who are part of the community who um, uh, are engaged in uh, policing. And, and uh, you know, there, you've seen some cities where the police uh, are almost like an invading army. They're there uh, to come in and, um, you know, enforce uh, their will upon the people. And this isn't that kind of community. Uh, the people in this community are very supportive uh, and we, uh, it, makes, it makes our jobs uh, that much easier. So thank you all, uh, members of Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for uh, all the support over the years. Uh, uh, you've all been uh, not only uh, my boss, uh, but uh, friends as well, and I really value the relationships uh, uh, that we've established over the years. Uh, City Manager Ballantyne, uh, thank you for the last two years. I appreciate uh, the support that you've uh, given me as well. I think I'd like to start with the council with them, a few comments. We'll start with Councilman Howie. I know they want to say a few words. Well, I, I, and this morning at Rotary Club, I, had, I was lucky enough to introduce you uh, to, to our members. You've been there many times, but I just want to thank you for your years of service. Uh, you know, I've lived in this town longer than, than you've been here, but uh, uh, you've shown you've just been a great uh, leader, uh, uh, excellent person. Uh, your morals, uh, your character has been, uh, we couldn't have asked for more from a chief in the last five years. And I'm just uh, very happy for you that you're retiring, you're going out, um, and you've just done a great job uh, for us here in the city, and, and thank you for your friendship. Also, you've, you've been, you know, been a, a good friend to, to me, and we're going to miss you tremendously. So, thank you. Yes. We are going to miss you. Um, you're a very unique person, Miles, <clears throat> and I've watched you grow over the years, um, grow up over the years. <laughs> um, looking back over over your. Uh, not your reputation, but your work ethic and how dedicated you are to the community and then rising to the position of chief. Um, you've set such a good example. I mean, not only enforcing the laws and in your leadership and your management style, but your morals yourself and being willing to step out in front and set an example. I think that's so important. Um, you've commanded respect and not demanded it, but you've commanded it because of the lifestyle that you've lived. I also want to commend Sally, your wife, for the support that she's given you over the years because without your family's support, it would be impossible to do the kind of job you've done. We are going to miss you. I'm going to miss your friendship. I'm going to miss your teasing and your taunting. Hmm. And um, driving off... Uh, prematurely from a parking lot uh, and not making sure somebody's car starts. That's a, an inside joke between Miles and I. <laughs> I ended up stranded one night and he had no idea we'd been talking and he left and went home and there I was. But I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I, I just want you to know that I've really appreciated your service to the citizens, and you've set such a good example. I'm going to miss you. You're welcome. Yeah, Miles, it's been uh, an absolute pleasure working with you for the last 22 years, and your years in, in leadership have just been uh, so stabilizing for this community. Uh, there's nothing worse... Uh, than sitting up here and having uh, speaker after speaker get up and complain about the police department doing this and the police department doing that. I mean, we all see it on TV now. And we don't have that kind of community here, and a lot of it is attributable directly to your uh, leadership. And I really appreciate that, and uh, 
wish you a great retirement. Uh, hope you enjoy it, and and thank you for your friendship. I mean, Iowa. Well, Miles, let's see. We've known each other more than 35 years, I know. And uh, when you were in patrol, we always talked, and you could always give me a straight answer on what was going on, and I've appreciated that. And uh, over the years, we've become real good friends, I believe. And uh, I think the best time I had with you when you were acting city manager, because <laughs> you couldn't pull your gun out then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you learned something that in that six months or how long it was you did that, but you did a great job doing juggling both jobs. And you put a, a what I think is the best police department in the valley, and uh, and I think it shows. And I know that with the new department and, and with Karen, I she's like my daughter. She started Don Luke everywhere else, and uh, it, I, I think it will continue. I think she's a great choice for chief and. I want you and Sally to enjoy your retirement. I think you're going to Arizona. And uh, remember, when you go there, you can't come back. No part-time stuff, okay? No flying in, working two weeks, and flying back out. Okay. But you guys really enjoy your retirement. You deserve it, and you've done a great job for us, and I thank you for it. Well, uh, what I have to say is uh, echoing what all the council members have talked about uh, the chief. Uh, I guess I want to speak in, in the voice of this, the community, the citizens of Chino, on the wonderful job that uh, the chief has done, leading his uh, men and women in the department, uh, making this a safe community to live, work, and play. So on behalf of the citizens, uh, thank you for your service, Miles. Uh, you've done a wonderful job. I want to wish you the best health and prosperity in your retirement. Try to, try to retire as long as you work. That's the, that's the goal. So I want to wish you the best. Thank you, sir. Let's have a round of applause for the chief. Thank you. Uh, I remember where's the script? Yeah, thanks. Oh, he can get his stuff later. Uh, next is the Mayor's Home Beautification Award for December 2014. Uh, the winner this month is Maggie Osier Osorino uh, on Garfield Street here in, in the city of Chino. I don't believe she's able to make it this evening. So uh, this is her beautiful home on Garfield. And uh, we have a certificate and a picture of her beautiful home that she will we'll give to her along with the uh, lapel pens and the uh, pen and pencil set and the, uh, excuse me, this big old sign to put in her front yard that says she's the winner. So we'll make sure she gets all of that. And with that, that's all the ceremonies. Okay, now we have a swearing-in ceremony. If uh, Council Member Yolowell will go to the uh, front to be sworn in along with Council Member Elrod, our uh, city clerk, Angela will swear them in. Do solemnly swear. I will support and defend. I will support and defend. Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution, and the Constitution, the Constitution of the State of California. California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against, against all, all enemies, enemies, foreign and domestic. domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. 
Thank you. I was good. Councilmember Yaloa and Councilmember Elrod uh, were up for re-election this year and nobody filed uh, to run against them, so uh, uh, they're, they're being reappointed. Um, <coughs> would you like to say a few words, Eunice? I would just like to thank the citizens of Chino for their faith in me, uh, and uh, it's truly an honor to serve you. This uh, is the starting of my 30th year. That's a long time. Um, but it is a privilege uh, to serve you, and I think any of us are approachable. If you have any issues, I know we're all eager to please and talk to any of you for any issues that you have. So thank you very much. Councilman Elrod. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank the citizens of Chino for putting their faith in us. It takes all of us to do the job here, City Council, Mayor, and staff. And uh, it's an honor to be able to serve you for another four years. And my door is always open and my phone number is in the book. So if anybody has a problem and they need something done, give me a call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the election of officers. Uh, I'd like to start off first with I'd like to nominate Eunice Loa for the office of Mayor Pro Tem. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second by Councilman Howie. Uh, our voting machine's on the blitz. Oh, right. I guess the rain got it too. So we'll, we'll do a voice uh, a vote. Uh. Council members, Earl Elrod? Yes. Tom Howie? Yes. Eunice Uloa? Yes. Glenn Duncan? Yes. Mayor Yates? Yes. It's unanimous. Well, uh, congratulations, Eunice. Thank you very much. Mayor Pro Tem. Number two, Chairperson of the Industrial Development Authority. I'd like to nominate Councilmember Elrod for the position of Chairperson of the Industrial Development Authority. Second. We have a second by Councilmember Yaloa. Conduct the vote, uh, please. Council members Glenn Duncan. Yes. Earl Elrod. Yes. Tom Howie. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Yaloa. Yes. Mayor Yates. Yes. It is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Elrod. Thank you. I would like to nominate Mayor Pro Tem Yaloa for the Office of Vice Chairperson of the Industrial Development Authority. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Howie. Take the roll, City Clerk. Council Members Glenn Duncan? Yes. Earl Elrod? Yes. Tom Howie? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Yaloa? Yes. Mayor Yates? Yes. And that is in the majority. Congratulations. Isn't this exciting? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Chairperson of the Public Financing Authority. I'd like to nominate Councilmember Duncan for the Office of Chairperson to the Public Financing Authority. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Please take the vote, Clerk. Council members Glenn Duncan? Yes. Earl Elrod? Yes. Tom Howie? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Yaloa? Yes. Mayor Yates? Yes. In majority, congratulations. Uh, last but not least, Chairperson of the Public Financing Authority. Vice I'd like to nominate... Pardon me? Vice Chairperson. Unless you're removing me from office already. Oh, I'm, <laughs> the, the heading's incorrect, but the words, I would like to nominate Council Member Howard the Office of Vice Chairperson Second. of the Public uh, Finance Government. Seconded by Council Member Duncan. Uh, vote, please, uh, Clerk. Council Members Glenn Duncan? Yes. Earl Elrod? Yes. Tom Howie? Okay. 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 <laughs> See. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Yaloa? Yes. And Mayor Yates? Yes, in majority. Congratulations. Uh, next is public communications. Um, it's the time and the place for the, the uh, general public to address the city council about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Uh, I got a first request is to call up Greg Arnhart of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley to lead us in the invocation. If you'd all please rise if you'd like to participate. Pastor? I'd like to thank you for inviting us here, Calvary Chapel Chino Valley, and also representing Pastor David Rosales. Bow your heads, please. Father in heaven, we just thank you that we could be here. We thank you for this city, Father, that you have placed us in. I pray for these that are here that are elected officials, but we know through your word that you have appointed them. I pray that you would give them wisdom understanding and father that you would help them to guide this city i thank you so much for being able to be part of the city and i pray father that you would continue to bless it 
I also thank you, Lord, as we're coming into the celebration of your birth of your son, that we're going to be able to celebrate that freely. And I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to be with us, be with us all. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. You all take seat, please. Um, I have some written requests to speak this evening. Uh, first is Pastor Adolfo Pacheco of Clearview Church. Pastor. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members uh, for giving me an opportunity to come up. We just wanted to uh, formally announce uh, the uh, beginning of our, our, our program that we have every year. Uh, we are now entering our seventh year of uh, our program. We call it Aim to Love, and it's on Christmas Eve. Uh, we have it every year. Some of you have actually participated uh, with us, and we, we surely enjoy that. Uh, it's an opportunity for us as a community to give back to hurting families with children. Uh, last year, uh, and we're continuing on forward, we hold this event at the uh, Chino Fairgrounds uh, from the hours of uh, Christmas Eve from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, last year, we were uh, successfully able to provide uh, food and toys from, from Santa Claus himself on the uh, Chino Valley fire truck uh, coming in with uh, blaring sirens and it's a great time for us to give back to the community. Uh, we were thankful that we were able to uh, uh, service about 2,000 people, over half were uh, children. Uh, every year we are so thankful from the support of our community, uh, from various uh, donations, private donors, uh, the city, uh, the school districts. We, we're so thankful for the help that we get. It's not always easy to serve our communities. Uh, and we just wanted to let you know, uh, as always, it's, uh, Christmas Eve is a tough time. And I know, uh, Mayor Yates, you were, you were saying of the 50,000 different places you have to be, <laughs> uh, you're always welcome at our table. It's an opportunity where it's unlike uh, some other programs. Our goal and the thing that I tell about the hundred or so volunteers that come out every year, uh, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I, I trust that you're going to do that thing for us this day. Uh, but the number one goal is to love on these people, put a hand on their shoulder, encourage them, uh, thank them for being there, get to know their story, uh, and, and even pray for them and encourage them in whatever way necessary. So we thank you for the opportunity of allowing us to come in uh, and partner with so many members, uh, yourselves included, to do this good work. And we thank you for that. And we just wanted to uh, say keep, a, keep us in prayer. It's always good to do a good thing. But uh, as a church, we always pray for everyone else. And this is a season we, we, uh, we value and uh, we look at your prayers as very special to us. Uh, as programs go, I think everybody knows it's, it's always very difficult in this season, but uh, we believe that there's a, is a greater purpose for us to be here, just as there's a greater purpose for you serving this community. We want to take an example, even like uh, Chief Miles gave us an excellent example of how to be a servant and to do it the right way. We want to be that here for this community as well. So thank you very much, and uh, are there any questions? <laughs> well, please, thank you. We appreciate the invite. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a, have a great holiday, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. You. Our next request to speak is L Lori Masonis. You're reminded you have five minutes for your presentation. Good evening, City Council. My name is Lori Masonis. I am a resident of Ontario, however, I'm going to share something with you that occurred in Chino recently. I'll start by first saying that the most important role in a republic is that of a private, of a private citizen. I want to share with you what I, uh, as a private citizen and a group of my friends, um, we went as a citizen lobbyist visit that took place on a October 20th, 2014, at Norma Torres's office. Uh, this is why she was still state senator. Um, as I stated, we led a group to Norma Torres's office in Chino. Um, it was arranged by phone with one of her staff people, Michael. Uh, when we got there, we were informed that our meeting was to take place in the front lobby. I believe their conference room was used for something else. At least that's what I was told. 
I was into two minutes of my presentation when all of a sudden, you know, that kind of noise commotion, um, two Chino police entered the room. Um, and their presence, their entrance was um, obvious. I will, let me state something very clear, however. My reason to be here and share with you has, um, uh, my disclaimer is I have um, no ill feelings toward Chino police. They were called, they showed up, they were civil, they were polite, they were professional, end of that. Um, but I'm here and I want the American public, us private citizens, you need to be aware that you have this wonderful privilege and this um, civic duty when it comes to you in your life to contact and communicate with your, um, to communicate your concerns with your elected officials. I, I think it's uh, precious. Um, however, no one, no citizen should ever have to experience what my group and I did, what we went through. Um, and recollecting, it wasn't until after we left the office that I thought of the image of Soviet Russia and, you know, the secret police barging in meetings. So I'm just sharing you what happened on October 20th as citizens who made um, an appointment to visit Norma Torres' office. The staff called on us. Just want you to be aware of it. Okay, thank you. I, I saw the video and um yeah, the, the Chino police were called by somebody from uh, the Torres' staff, and um, and the, they didn't come in rattling nothing. They weren't that way. They were like, <laughs> no, uh, they were quite polite. Uh, they were very polite, and they were responding to a call from Torres' uh, staff, so uh, uh, they had to respond, but they were very cordial. So I saw the video. Uh, now, whether, I don't know why the staff person called the police because you weren't doing anything but talking, so I didn't know. It's kind of weird, but oh well. Um, next, same subject, Robin H Hudston? Fitston. What is it? Fitston. The H is silent. Oh, the, okay. That's <laughs> Ellen, what? Yeah. Don't um, there. Okay. yeah, my name's Robin Fitston. I was also with the same group that day for our citizen lobby meeting that Lori organized. and. Uh, I'm the one that sent you the video. I'm the one that took the video, so I wanted <clears throat> you to be able to see that. And I will just say this. Uh, the staff members called the police. We've done many of these citizen lobby meetings. We've never had anything like this happen before. And I would just say this about the police. We are very pro-law enforcement, our organization. But I will say, being in the meeting, perhaps you had to be there. It did feel like uh, they burst in upon the scene. They interrupted our meeting. In my opinion, they could they could have waited at the door. I think it was apparent that we were engaged in a very civil meeting. There was no danger. But um, I would invite the public to watch the video. It's on <coughs> our website, wethepeoplerising.com. And again, we are very pro in law enforcement, and we realize for some reason Norma Torres' a staff member called the officers on the scene. And I would just like to uh, camp upon what Lori said. Uh, the reason we were there is we had an issue with Norma Torres as constituents and citizen lobbyists. She was very instrumental in passing a bill in Sacramento that takes three million dollars of our tax dollars and allots that to the illegal border crossers from Central America. And, and we were there to express our opposition to uh, then Senator Torres's actions. And we believe that $3 million should be going towards our struggling American citizens. We have over 400,000 U.S. citizens in foster care. We have veterans that are homeless, American families that are homeless. 
veterans living under bridges. And we were just there that day to communicate our opposition to what Norma Torres did. And would just like the public to know we think our tax dollars should be going to our American citizens. And again, I would encourage the public to take a look at the video. Again, it's at wethepeoplerising.com. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, I just want to tell you when I watched the video, uh, if their staff person called, you don't know what they said to the police exactly. department. Exactly. They could have said there are people here with guns or knives, and our police officers, uh, it really didn't, exactly. when I watched it and heard it, they didn't storm in. And so you, they, you, don't know, you don't know what they were told exactly. by the staff. I totally agree and so, with that. And uh, so, yeah, they were responding, and, and they were, like I said, very, very polite. And, uh, but they had, to, they had to respond. Thank you. Uh, next, same organization, Carol. Slaper, you guys have hard last names. I had that all through school, so I know. Okay. I'm used to it. Um, I'm a citizen of um, Pomona uh, over 20 years, and Norma, I'm, I'm going to follow up a story with Norma. Uh, she was the council person there, and then she was a mayor. She is very, very, very pro illegal uh, immigrant, and she seems to forget that there are other. Other people, uh, let me let me just put it that way, to be kind, um, in Pomona and, and in Chino uh, and um, her other uh, communities that sh she will be presiding over as our U.S. Senator. We need to be Congress, careful. Congresswoman. Yes, thank you. We need to be careful to, um, when we visit our, our lobbyists of, of, of the politicians, um, that's really to hold their feet to the fire and to do what's right for American citizens and for, as Robin said, and we will all repeat the same thing, but there are only a few of us here tonight, so don't worry about that. But we do need to take care of American citizens first, mm -hmm. first, and after that, if there's anything left over, we can see, you know, we can deal with that. But the point is, we do have our own homeless, and we do have our own veteran problems, et cetera. So we have to take care of that. I do not see uh, Norma Torres uh, sp well spending money in that direction. I'll just put it that way. Um, she has been very instrumental in dividing our community in Pomona, and that it seems to be continued by additional council members. I, w I am so I am really happy that I came tonight. Um, I, I really enjoyed being here. I find everyone here very respectful. You are all look at the people that are speaking, and I'm, we're, I'm not used to that in my city, <laughs> okay? So uh, I, I really appreciate a, a very professional atmosphere. And, um, and again, uh, I'm a Neighborhood Watch block captain in Pomona, have been for six years. Very, very... Uh, um, positive and wonderful relationships with our police officers and our area commander and the police chief, uh, the new Chief uh, Caprero. So this really is about America and our country and what come, and we come first. And um, I, 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 I want people to be careful about where Norma Torres is going to take you. And that's about all I can say right now. But you have a right to go into her office. And when, uh, when I was there with the group, and when those officers came in, it, it, it was very frightening. I've never had it happen before. Um, and they stayed for the entire meeting. They actually followed the group downstairs to their cars. Um, don't know. I don't have any idea what the uh, the office manager could possibly have told them for that kind of uh, of activity. Um, a few of us went to speak directly to the officers, not the the same ones, but we went to the police department to express um, our concern that that they realize um, that our issue is not with them. They were doing their job and they were very professional, and um, so. This is still America, and, and we still have a right to visit our, the offices of our politicians. And um, that's really all we're asking. And no one was out of order. And I'm, I'm sorry that Robin had to shut down the, the video, because you would have seen a very, very respectful group. Um, we're outspoken as citizens uh, with regards to our issue, just like we are tonight. 
but um, there wasn't anything out of order, nothing. There's no reason to, for them to be called. So um, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to cover, and I just want to, again, thank you. This has been a very positive experience being here tonight, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you thank for you. your testimony. Uh, w one good thing is, uh, in, in your eyes, I would think, is uh, she's a Democrat, and now she's in the Congress in the minority, and uh, she won't be able to do anything to harm uh, anybody because she'll never get out of committee. Yes. Uh, so uh, yes. Uh, that's where the voters put her. So you probably won't getting you won't be getting too much uh, activity from her uh, yes. because, unless the balance changes. But uh, we won't give up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for your testimony. Next, uh, same organization, Raymond Herrera, Mr. Herrera. Reminder: You have five minutes, sir. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, City Council. Good evening, America. This will be on Facebook, so it, like the other video, will go across the nation. Um, I'd like to first speak to the American people about Obama amnesty. Um, it's, um, it's a lie. Obama didn't do anything, didn't accomplish anything by being on national TV, proclaiming four million illegal aliens to be you know, amnesty, work permits, work visas, you know, driver's licenses. You know, what he did, he did Raymond Herrera a favor. He stepped onto the battlefield with we the people, and it'll be the final battle, and I promise you that, America. Norma Torres, Senator Norma Torres. I happen to know her well. I've been battling illegal aliens on American soil for 11 years. I've been to her city council um, when she was the mayor there probably at least 50 times. Let me give you a little insight as to Norma Torres. She would call illegal aliens to mass in front of the city council chambers to keep the Americans from walking in. It was like near-death experiences walking through her crowd. At one point, a man almost split my head wide open with a four-foot rod, and he stopped right here. And that's just to go seek political redress. <coughs> Norma Torres fired police chief Rodriguez for impounding illegal alien vehicles at checkpoints. This is the caliber of person that she is. At one point, she kept me from speaking for three minutes. She allowed the crowd to drown me out. Then when, I, when she quieted them down, my three minutes were up, she said, your three minutes are up. That's her history. She came to America as a five-year-old illegal alien to join her illegal alien parents that have been displacing American workers. She went through our schools and now she's gone through the political apparatus and is now a congresswoman. This is who's representing the city. This past weekend she was on national Hispanic television telling the Mexican people that her only reason for becoming a congresswoman was to rail on behalf of illegal aliens over the American people and how disgusted she is with the divide in the illegal alien camp that face off with the Americans. For the next year or so, she's going to travel from state to state, city to city, to speak to coalitions, the illegal aliens, to rail on behalf of criminal activity in our country. She wants to be the central figure and the voice for illegal aliens on American soil. So now you know why Norma Torres called on my American patriots. It was vile. It was wrong. We have a right to freedom of speech and political redress. Without them, we have no democracy. This is what's wrong with illegal aliens on American soil being amnesty. They rail on behalf of illegal aliens and not the American people. And furthermore, enough of Norma Torres. I'm asking you, Mayor, and I'm going to come and ask the police chief in person. I want a copy of the incident report. I want a copy of the police report and a copy of the recording that led to my American patriots being thrown out of that office. And it's incumbent upon you, Mayor, and this city council help me get those answers because I'm going to be in Chino from now on 
And I'm going to be doing a protest here and a protest there. But Norma Torres, she blew it because now she comes on to my battlefield. She's the Congresswoman, and I am an American warrior that will defeat her. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Herrera, the point, were you wanting that information? You, you can get that information by simply going to the police department, uh, to the front, front desk there, and, and request that information, and they will supply it to you. And I am going to do that, and I'm going to take good. it up with the Ethics Committee here in California and Washington, D.C. Thank right. you. Good evening. Thank you for your, your testimony. That's all the written requests I have to speak. Or anybody else in the audience uh, have something to say? We have uh, <coughs> state your name for the record, please. Brenda Strong. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I hope I can do this without crying. I would like to thank you all for your support um, in the death of my husband. Uh, staff, city employees, and the community have been wonderful. We have a wonderful police department and fire department that have been there, and we're a great support, and I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll miss your husband. You. We're really missing. Anybody else in the audience? You should have a comment? Yeah. I'm baffled and very disturbed by some of these things that I've heard. Um, our police department, if they're called, they will respond. Um, it isn't at their discretion. And so if someone calls and calls for some kind of police support, I have no idea what that call was, except that there was a call and our officers did respond. That's appropriate. It's appropriate for any business, any citizen in Chino who feels they need police support, whether we think they're right, whether the next door neighbor thinks they're right, if someone feels that they're under threat or whatever and they call for police backup or police support, those officers are going to be there. It's not their discretion to say, yeah, we're coming or yeah, we're not going to come. And it isn't their discretion to show up and wait at the door. If someone has called for help, that's why our community is so good, because our officers will be there. Maybe there was absolutely no reason for them to be called, but that's not their discretion. Now, Mr. Herrera, you said that your group was thrown out of her office? Yeah, well, we were uh, escorted out. We had Gustavo police watching every move of the American people. And, and if I'll the police, police Mr. Herrera, in this city, and this is a great city, great police department. I understand what you're saying, but still, the fact remains that our rights were subverted, and that's our point of contention here tonight. Um, and you have a right to that information, um, but I, you're making it sound like, well, you called them Gestapo, and that they threw you out. I disagree with that. I, I said this with the active like when they got there. They should have, you know what they should have done? They should have arrived and interviewed the lady that called them, that made the assessment and said there's no incident here, and waited outside so that they could seek political redress without them standing there in the room with them. Well, Mr. So, Herrera, you know, we our police, our police, you are not on, exist. you're not Previously. on the microphone. Um, our officers follow protocol. Um, they are polite. Uh, they, I believe they act appropriately. They have cameras on themselves so that there is video uh, proof of whatever went on so that there is justice. And you can get whatever is publicly available to you. But I'm going to tell you right now, I believe in our police department. We have a wonderful community. Um, and, it, and one of the reasons is because we have a very strong police force. They are not Gestapo. They do not strong arm people. But if you, as a citizen of this community, call for their help, sir, they're going to be there. And if, if anybody calls for their help, they're going to respond. And they're going to do what they've been trained to do. I don't think they're there to stop you from your American rights. We believe in that. We believe in you lobbying people. We believe in what you need. But if they're called, they're going to come. And that's, I feel very strongly about that, and I wanted to go on record for that. Yes, I grew up in this city. You know, what Chief, uh, Police Chief Joey Linza, John Ingro Jr., and John Ingro Sr., and on down the line, they're personal friends of mine. Ruben Ayala is a personal friend of mine, and everything. And, and the whole point of contention here is that 
We mean why we should do your assessment and wait it outside. Sir, that's we your opinion. They're well, going to follow there. protocol. <laughs> Mr. Herrera. Mr. Herrera, well, that boils down to you don't know what the person that called the police department said to them. Well, they they could have said there's a guy in here with a gun or a knife, and uh, our officers are not going to wait outside and uh, and uh, and do that. They're going in because you don't know what they what the person that called the police what they said to them or what was going on. So they I saw the video. They acted appropriately, like I stated early earlier. Uh, I didn't see anything wrong, and they weren't Gestapo, and they were very courteous. I watched the video, and I think your anger should be directed, all your anger directed at Ms. Torres and not the Chino Police Department. Uh, anyway, well, once they got through the door, they didn't. I saw them respond. No, you don't know what the call was. They didn't know what was going on. Well, it's not up for debate. It's not up for debate, so anyway. Uh, anybody else wishing to address the council? Well, we have students here from Don Lugo High School, and uh, our tradition is that you will uh, line up in front of the podium, give us your name, your class, and your uh, teacher's name. So uh, you already got a line, so just bring it right forward here. We do have police yeah. officers here that can escort you up here if you like. <laughs> our so-called Gestapo Police Department. You better get up here. I'm calling Norma Torres. <laughs> Hi, my name is Raul Ortiz, Mr. Today's class, U.S. Government. Don Lugo? Yes, Don Lugo. Welcome. That'll be a dollar. We're charging now. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Stephanie Garcia, and I'm in Mr. High Street's class from Don Lugo. Welcome. My name is Ryan Flores. Um, I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Ms. Ragsdale, Economics, and I am class of 2015. Welcome. <laughs> my name is Edward Salazar. I'm class of 2015. My teacher's name is Ms. Carpentier. Welcome. My name is Brian Choi. <coughs> Choi. I'm from Don Lugo High School, and my class is Mr. Sade, U.S. Government. Hi, my name is Fernando Velasquez. I'm class of 2015, and my teacher is Mr. Sade. Welcome. Uh, my name is Robert Avina. I'm from Don Lugo High School. My teacher is uh, Ms. Ragsdale. Hey, can I take a selfie real quick with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> a selfie. A selfie, all right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> my name is Edward Escondone, and I, my teacher is Mr. High Street from Don Lugo. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Uh, Hello, my name is Teresita Macias, class of 2015, and my teacher is Mr. Sade. Welcome. Hello, my name is Ricardo Lara, I'm from Don Lugo, and my teacher is Mr. Sade. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jimmy Rodriguez, I'm in class of 2015 at Don Lugo, and my teacher is Ms. Chai Street. Welcome. Hi, I'm Jalissa Chavez, I'm from Mr. High Street's class, Nikon. Welcome, thanks for being here. Hi, I'm Victoria Martinez. I attend Don Lugo, and I have Mr. High Street. Uh, hi, I'm Monica Drawn, and I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. Welcome. Hi, I'm Anthony Rosas from Don Lugo High School, and I'm in Mr. High Street's honors econ class. My name is Andrew Tracy, and I'm in uh, Mr. High Street's class. My name is Jason Alvarado. I'm a senior at Don Lugo High School, and I'm in Mr. High Street's Honors Econ class. All right, honors, all right. My name is Cody Skeen, uh, class of 2015, and I'm in Mr. High Street's class. Welcome. Hi, my name is Jennifer Cuenca. I'm a senior at Lugo, and I'm in Ms. Carpentier's government class. Hi, my name is Stephanie Torres. I'm in the class Hello. of 2015, and I have Mr. High Street's Honors Econ class. Hi. My name is Anthony Perez, and I'm Mr. High Street's econ class. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Christina Politegi, and I'm in Mr. High Street's econ class. Welcome. Hi, I'm Kenneth Gomez, and I'm in this Mr. High Street's class. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Whatever his name is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abigail Brooks. I'm a senior at Don Lugo, and I'm in uh, Ms. Ragsdale's econ class. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julian Palacio. I'm also a senior and attend a Don Lugo, and I'm in Mr. High Street's Where'd you get that sugar work? Oh, I'm part of the Teen Advisory Committee as well. All right, good for you. Good for you. 
Hi, I'm Luis Guevara. I'm class 2015. I'm Mr. High Street's econ class. Welcome. Uh, Hi, I'm Jose Bundes, and I'm a senior at Don Lugo, and I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. Thank you for being here. Hello, I'm Sebastian Pena, and I'm in Mr. High Street's econ class. Welcome. Hi, I'm Andres Vera, and um, I'm a senior at Lugo, and I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. Thanks for being here. Hi, my name is Joseph Bennett. I'm a senior at Don Lugo, and I'm in Mr. High Street's econ class. Hi, my name is Matthew Lind, and I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Loretta Vasquez. I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. Hi, my name is Jasmine Garcia, and I'm in Mr. Sade's government class. Welcome. Hi, I'm Genesis Chicas. I'm from Don Lego High School, and I go to Mr. E Mr. High Street's e Mr. High Street. What are his name? I'm from Mr. High Street's econ class. Thank you. Welcome. You know, I had the same problem when I was in school. I couldn't remember my teachers, none of my teachers' names. Um, well, thanks for being here. You'll be able to see yourself on television for the next two weeks, three times a day on cable TV. So, <laughs> so if you messed up, it's going to be on television. You might, want to take, you might want to take roll in five minutes and see who's still here. You're still here, yeah. There you go. Okay, folks, next is the consent calendar. Anybody wishing to pull an item for discussion may do so now. Uh, we have a motion by Duncan, second by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Yeloa. Uh, voice uh, vote, please, clerk. Yes. Yes. Tom Howie. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yes. Mayor Yates. Yes. Passes in the majority. Uh, next new business item nine: introduction of ordinance number 2014-020 and ordinance amending section 19-01-110 of the municipal code pertaining to appeals of decisions affecting subdivision application. A report this evening is by our city attorney, Mr. Jimmy Cateris. Mr. Cateris. Yes, Mayor, Council Members, uh, this ordinance amends the appeal procedure for the approval of subdivisions by the Planning Commission. Uh, during the last year, due to all the litigation that we've had pertaining to our projects, we realized that there was a substantial difference between the appeals process for uh, land use projects and subdivision maps. And so what this amendment does is it brings the appeals procedure to be almost identical with what uh, we have for other <coughs> land use approvals such as zone changes and conditional use permits, etc. Uh, the main change has to do with the requirement that if someone wants to appeal, they have to state uh, their grounds at the Planning Commission. They have to state their grounds in the appeal document. If they fail to do either of those and the City Council does not have the right to consider any challenge once the matter comes to hearing before the City Council. Uh, the only thing that is not the same is the period in time in which appeals have to be set. Under the City Zoning Ordinance, appeals have to be set within 60 days and the Council has 45 days thereafter to uh, respond. With this ordinance, the appeal has to be set within 30 days and the Council only has 10 days to respond. The reason for that difference is the Subdivision Map Act, which is in the Government Code, specifies this uh, shorter period. But that's the extent of it, and it uh, w should make uh, uh, appeals from the Planning Commission uh, easier to process uh, if they're challenged. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Prior to Council questions or comments, I'll open this for public comment. Anybody in the audience wishing to address the Council on this issue may do so now. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Mr. Any Mayor? questions? Yeah, I do. Motion by Councilman Duncan. I have a question. Okay. So I need a second. Second. Second by Councilman Howie. A question by Councilman Elrod. Yeah, Mr. Gutierrez, are you saying that the law states that we can't go the old extension time? Uh, what, what it says is that the hearing has to be set within 30 days. Okay. Versus. And ours was 45 days? No, the, for other... Oh, no, uh, it was 60 days. 60 days. And then it was 45 days. For the council to make a dis dis final decision, decision after the hearing, yes. And under the Subdivision Map Act, those periods are 30 days and 10 days. So that... Th we have to accept that? Yes. Because I think 10 days, if we don't have that, it doesn't fall within our two meetings a month, we're going to have special... Special meetings on that. Th that's possible. If, for example, it, typically what we do when we bring a matter to the council is we already have proposed findings. 
so the council can adopt the proposed findings and make the decision then. But if during the hearing something comes up or the council has a different view and we have to amend them, either we amend them then at the council meeting or we only have 10 days to make the amendment and bring it back and it could require a special meeting. But uh, we're locked into that by the government code. It doesn't allow us to, to make the decision more than 10 days after okay. the hearing. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, City Clerk. Council members Glenn Duncan. Yes. Earl Albright. Yes. Tom Howie. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yes. Mayor Yates. Yes. Passes in the majority. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, next is Mayor and Council reports. Uh, first item is committee assignments. Ratifies the mayor's appointments regarding committee assignments. Entertaining motion. Motion. Motion, motion by sec uh, by Councilman Duncan, seconded by Councilman Elrod. Uh, City Clerk, take the vote, please. Council members Glenn Duncan. Yes. Earl Elrod. Yes. Tom Howie. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Uloa. Yes. Mayor Yates. Yes. Passes in the majority. Thank you. Item 11, community support. Um, I'm requesting uh, appropriation of $2,000 to the Chino Pop Warner uh, Colts team. That's the big boys, the 13, 14 year olds. Um, they ended up winning the Mount Baldy Conference in their division, which is the midget division. I don't know why they call the big boys midgets, but they do. Uh, it's that their division. And they, I'll be darned, they went on to win the uh, Southern Regional in Division Two, And uh, they are heading out December 4th, two days from now, to Florida to the uh, Disney um, Sports Park. And they, uh, they'll play two games. Oh, if they win the first game, they go on to the second game. If they win the second game, they will go to the uh, the Pop Warner Super Bowl game. And so uh, they, at the last second here, they've had to raise $40,000 to send the kids via airplane along with the coaches. Uh, and the reason for the money is they, if they keep winning, they have to extend their time in the, in the hotel, plus feed all those. I'd hate to feed 13 or 14 year olds for that many days, but. Um, so I'm requesting from council that uh, we appropriate $2,000 to help them out. And uh, the other uh, uh, caveat is we need to have the check cut by tomorrow because they're leaving the next day. And the city manager assured me that that could be done. So I would, I, I would move that this item be um, uh, approved. Second. We have a motion and a second. City clerk, take the vote, please. Council members, Glenn Duncan. Yes. Earl Elrod. Yes. Tom Howie? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Eunice Uloa? Yes. Mayor Yates? Yes, and passes the majority. Um, I don't know, you folks probably remember Matt McCain, who was, uh, well, I met Mac, Matt when he was seven years old playing Pop Warner, <laughs> and his, and his uh, mom, Betty McCain, who uh, retired uh, from the city. But uh, Matt is the head coach of the Colts. His son, Cole, is the quarterback. And so they've been really doing good, so uh, we're wishing the best of luck. <laughs> Uh, also under Mayor's uh, report, please join us for the Christmas Parade and Fair taking place on Saturday, December 13th. The parade will begin at 9 a.m. at the corner of Riverside Drive and Monta Vista Avenue and will end at 10 a.m. at the Chino Hall, Chino City Hall for a carnival uh, full of family fun, including uh, the carnival rides are free, compliments of the council, uh, entertainments and the craft fair and delicious food. And for more information, you can contact the Carolyn Owens Community Center at 909-334-3258. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Yoloa. <laughs> <laughs> they had it wrong on the script there. there <laughs> um, they still had Duncan there. I just, uh, the mayor is going to adjourn um, in Robert Dunnigan's um, honor this evening. He was a very close friend of our families. Um, Dennis will read some information about him. <coughs> A very, very, very special person uh, in our community uh, who had lived here years and years and years. Um, his wife had retired and was a volunteer here at City Hall for quite some time. And um, he's going to be really missed. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Howie. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate um, Councilman Elrod uh, on uh, another four years you know you say four more years well you have another four years and um, it's been a pleasure working with you and you do a great job in the city for the city you really care about the city I want to congratulate you and look forward to working with you at least for the next couple of years thank you Tom um, and I continue my term um, and then uh, Councilmember Uloa 
Uh, 30 years ago, a friend of mine brought this sign for my front yard, and it wasn't just a regular little campaign. That thing was a monster sign. And I looked at the sign, and I said, how do you pronounce that last name? And he says, it's Uloa. I said, oh, and tell me about it. Oh, she's going to be great on city council. I said, okay, fine. So I voted for her 30 years ago, and uh, so I want to congratulate her again uh, for continuing to work with and care about, uh, I don't think anybody cares more, well, we all care about the city, obviously, but Eunice really cares about the city and does a great job, and I want to congratulate you, Eunice, well, thank um, you. for continuing on and, and helping the city as you do. Okay? Thank you very much. I have, to, I have to tell you a cute story, though, about Tom. Tom had a problem with my name. Yep. And then when I was mayor, uh, Tom, <laughs> home I mean, or Tom was honored, and I looked at his last name, and you know, sometimes you just draw a blank, and you try to sound out something that sounds like somebody else, but instead of calling him Tom Howie, I called him Tom Hoffey. Yeah, that was so. not bad. I've been called worse than that, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> so oh was, my gosh. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Anyway, thank you, All right, just a couple of other things. I attended the uh, our police department's um, uh, fundraiser at Riverside Grill a couple weeks ago where they uh, the officers are all serving the food and you know they're getting better getting much better at serving the food they don't make that many mistakes anymore and then of course you since they have guns you don't you know you don't can't complain too loudly uh, but um, they did a great job and I know they raised uh, they raised a lot of money and it goes right back into the community I think the fundraiser was for the neighborhood house mm -hmm. and I think they did over two thousand oh, dollars that's night. great wasn't something I think like that? we did yeah. close to how much over three over three see there you go so uh, congratulations on that chamber mixer I attend the school board meeting I was at uh, I was at supervisor uh, Hagman swearing in yesterday in San Bernardino and that was uh, that was great it was really it was good and then last but not least I want to remind everybody about the YMCA's 5k walk run this Saturday the 6th better known as the reindeer romp so come out and enjoy yourself, get your exercise in. Uh, and they promised no rain this year after it rained the last two years for the 5K. So we're looking forward to that. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Duncan? Yes, uh, a couple things. I did a walkthrough today on our, uh, our vector control headquarters over on Locust Street in Ontario. And uh, we have uh, completed our second floor of the building. We have state-of-the-art uh, laboratories there so that when we do mosquito testing or uh, we find dead birds that uh, uh, could have been infected with West Nile virus, we don't have to send them out anymore. We can do them internally and Did turn you send them, them airmail? Uh, <laughs> we send mosquito packs, yeah. <laughs> nobody got it, okay, go ahead. So, yeah, nobody got that one, does. Okay. So we will, we will be having a grand opening there sometime in January, I believe, and it's really, really a nice facility. Um, the other thing is we're gearing up for our, I believe it's our fifth annual Chino Neighborhood House Christmas party. Uh, we serve about 600 uh, people that day, very, very low income members of our community. Uh, I bought 120 bikes today, which will be put together by uh, some of the... Uh, residents of uh, CIM and uh, they will be delivered from there to the community building and a lot of kids will get brand new bikes for Christmas and a lot of toys. So uh, we depend on neighbor or on, on community support. Uh, uh, we'll be asking for toys, begging for toys, whatever it takes to get toys. And uh, we try to make a, a little bit of brightness at Christmas time for some kids that don't get the normal Christmas gifts. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'm going to be kind of disappointed this week when I don't get to read about the Ontario City Council meeting tonight because I see David Allen here in the call. I, I wait for that, David. I go into your blog and see if I can read it a day ahead of time. So I'll have to ask Mayor Paul what uh, what's going on there. So, thank you very much. Councilman Elrod. I have no report. Thank you. Um, one last thing with, with the Chief Pruitt is this Thursday at 3 p.m. will be his walk of honor. And I encourage all you folks to, to, to make it out to the PD. Uh, this, all, the, all the officers will be lined up and the chief will uh, walk uh, the walk of honor. And that will be his last uh, function as, as, as our chief. So it's a, it, it's a tradition and so we'd like to see as many people as we can to, out there to, to uh, honor the chief. Um, city manager, anything to report? I too would like to uh, thank Ronald for his leadership and service, especially during the transition from Pat Glover to myself. I appreciate uh, 
your leadership and uh, for the organization, but the community as a whole. I also want to recognize Sally and thank you for all the years you shared Miles with us. And I look forward to working with uh, uh, Karen Comstock. Uh, Miles has left us in good hands, and I appreciate that. City Attorney, Mr. Gutierrez. I don't have any report, but I would like to thank Miles also for his service to the city and his, his work with my office. And I think he's done a very good job. It's Chief, we're going to miss you, and thank you for all your services to the city. Chief, anything to report? <laughs> Last time. Last time. I do have one final report, Your Honor. I would be remiss to uh, thank my beautiful wife. Uh, 27 years. be more years. remiss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be 24-7 pretty quick. So yeah. Thank you. That's Say right. the right words, okay? That's right. I've already, I've already talked to Sandra about Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 27, almost 28 years of uh, being married to a police officer is tough. Uh, and so she's really uh, done it gracefully. And uh, uh, so thank you. I, I really appreciate uh, all of her patience. Uh, I'm always reminded during the holidays uh, of the many, many holidays that I've missed. Uh, and uh, she spent them uh, home alone with, uh, with the boys and had to uh, um, do that on many occasions. So I wanted to thank her for that. I also wanted to... Um, uh, welcome uh, Captain Comstock, soon to be uh, Chief Comstock. Uh, as you've mentioned, uh, and she'll have her swearing in ceremony, she'll have some things to say. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk about uh, what a great uh, job Karen has done as a captain for me. And uh, if you like uh, what's going on at the police department, you can really credit uh, Karen uh, for a lot of the innovative, creative ideas uh, that we've been able to implement. And she's been a great member. Uh, of my executive team, and she's going to be a great uh, chief of police. And so I look forward to uh, seeing what she does, uh, taking our department to the to the next level and making it even better than it is today. And finally, members of the council, Mr. Mayor, uh, again, I just wanted to reiterate uh, how much I appreciate all your support, particularly over the last five years uh, being chief of police. And uh, tonight was sort of evidence of the kind of support that uh, we get here from the council. And that, that sort of support doesn't come easy, and we've had to prove, I think, ourselves uh, to you over and over again uh, that we are the kind of police department that you can be proud of and you can uh, be confident in, in uh, how we handle uh, a variety of situations. So again, thank you for uh, all your years of support. Uh, it's very meaningful uh, to me in particular and to the officers as well. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Yeah, Miles, I would like to ask you to stay there. And Karen, would you come up? Because I think the citizens of Chino need to see the two of you together, the outgoing chief and the new incoming chief. Uh. She's better probably, looking, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Aurora. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably the one person that's happy in this room that Miles is leaving. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, uh, I, got, I got one quick comment, uh, Karen. It was nice of you to bring all your Don Lugo uh, students yes, in tonight. Alumni. Uh, yeah. Since, since you're a Don Lugo alumni. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you're welcome. Let me know when you want me to Ready stop on. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Chief Mr. Shackelford, anything to report, sir? Nothing to report, Mayor. Thank you for being here. Mr. Mayor, what? I was going to tell Matt, you know, he said the chief worked with him well and everything when he first got here. And I said, he was scared to death he had to be city manager again. So <laughs> he made it work. <laughs> uh, we're going to close session of a concept for legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to paragraph one of subdivision D of government code section 54956.9, the Chino Basin Municipal Water District versus City of Chino at Al case number RCVRS51010. Uh, and we'd like to close in memory of uh, Mr. Bob Dunnigan, born September 27th, 1930, passed away November 25th, 2000. 14 at 84 years young. Uh, military service, was in the Army. He was married uh, July 27th, 1949 to Chlorine Hayes, best known as Corky's, and a restaurant in Rancho Cucamonga named after her. Uh, retired truck driver to California milk producers for 45 years. He served on the Citizen Advisory Board for the California Institute for Men, and he was on the board of the Chino Junior Fairgrounds. He survived by five children, 
Linda Towles, Gail Gramer, Larry Dunnigan, and Glenn Dunnigan, uh, nine grandchildren, uh, Mike Towles, Rob Towles, Janelle Jones, Stacy Grammer, Janelle Bacchus, Robert Gramer, Jess Dunnigan, Stephanie Dunnigan, and Shane Dunnigan. Fifteen great-grandchildren and six great-great-grandchildren. We will close in his memory, and he will be severely missed. I've known him for years. Great man. So we will go into uh, um, closed session. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you on the 16th of December. Into closed session we go.
Angela, you ready? I will reconvene the City Council. Uh, the report of action is we've given direction to our City Attorney. We will stand adjourned to the next regular meeting of the City Council that will be held on Tuesday, December 16, 2014 at 7 p.m. Closed session at 6 p.m. if necessary. Have a great evening. Drive safely, y'all.